Why is overworking yourself considered a virtue? Why is romanticizing with your books for long hours every single day considered as a staple ingredient in the making of a successful doctor? We are being forced to overstudy without even realizing it. And the day we actually realize this is when we have already fallen into the burnout pit. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fifth year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. The very first thing that we need to dig into is to find out the why behind overstudying. And the answer is actually in just one word pressure and this pressure comes in two forms external pressure and internal pressure external pressure is what society puts upon us by our friends family colleagues you know teachers fellow students etc and we are told that life is a race and if we do not run fast enough then we will be left behind we are told that there is a linear relationship between the number of hours we study and the chances of actually winning this race if any such thing even exists in his book Barking up the wrong tree, Eric Barker goes through one study conducted at Boston College in the US where researchers tracked two groups of students. The first group comprised of 81 valedictorians, aka students who studied very hard and for long hours and they were actually bound to be successful according to the metrics established by the society because apparently they were college toppers. The other group comprised of students who were average performers and even dropouts and now both of these group of students were tracked for the next 15 years and guess what the 81 valedictorians actually had decent jobs were earning good money and had some decent commercial success but none of them like none of them actually managed to change the world in an earth shattering way meanwhile surprisingly enough the other group of students who were supposed to be unsuccessful in terms of the societal metrics a lot of them numerous students amongst that group managed to have their name in the Forbes 400 list aka the 400 wealthiest and richest men in America. Now what can we learn from this one study? The point that Eric Barker wanted to prove is that valedictorians are actually amazing at following the rules aka our school system makes excellent sheep not excellent thinkers. Whereas the average students on the other hand are really good at you know thinking outside of the box and breaking some rules and you know going against societal expectations and really that is what leads them to eventually changing the society as a whole. And now let's talk about internal pressure. So internal pressure is basically what we put on ourselves because we have these high expectations from ourselves and we have these high demands because we want to be the best. Now obviously this mentality is actually quite good to have however there is a very fine line in you know between this mentality having a positive impact versus this mentality turning toxic especially medical students most of them are actually you know quite type a personalities they are used to getting the top grades in high school and are used to being the best or the smartest biggest nerds in their classes now when all these medical students get together in the same class in the same university and start competing with each other that is when, when you know, the temperature really rises. Now imagine 100 Usain Bolts competing against each other in an Olympic race. And now try and imagine how hard all these Usain Bolts would be working and practicing during their training sessions, you know they would basically be over overworking themselves to the point of exhaustion because they know what they're up against and they want to be the best. So nobody out there is putting that internal pressure on you. This internal pressure is what we build ourselves because we have this urge due to our type A personalities to be the best and have the best possible grades and to be seen upon as something as the smartest guy in the class. Let's have a short look at three vital symptoms of overstudying before we can discuss how to reduce this pressure and really calm our minds. The first symptom is lack of sleep because this is a very endless, vicious, ferocious cycle. So when you are overstudying, you obviously compromise on your sleep. And when you start compromising on your sleep, you wake up the next day even more tired than the, than the day before. And then you start studying again and 
you feel that you just can't focus enough because you haven't had the right amount or the right quality of sleep and when you are not learning optimally you are bound to then to then you know force yourself into studying even more because you have this feeling that oh man i did study for like six hours seven hours eight hours but i still don't feel like i absorbed all the material so you overstudy even more and even more overstudying means that you sleep even less so less sleep more overstudying more or overstudying even less sleep it's a cycle guys it's a cycle which is never ending the second symptom is actually guilt now when you start experiencing more guilt than relaxation or excitement by doing by doing certain activities or habits that used to previously give you happiness then you know that there is something wrong and i have personally experienced this to the point where i like where even listening to music while driving up my, my car um, used to give me guilt because I felt that I could have been much more productive by listening to an audio book instead of listening to music. That my friends is pretty toxic, trust me. The third symptom is ignoring your friends and family and this one is pretty much like self-explanatory because your relationships will start to suffer. Um, your friends and family will feel neglected because your relations come secondary to studying. And this is when you know that something is wrong, something is fishy and I'm probably studying a bit too much than I should be. Let me break down how I personally deal with this toxicity. So first of all, I use something called the Socratic approach because I ask myself Socratic questions, aka the why behind everything. Ask yourself this question, why do I want to be the best? Why do I want to outsmart the others? Is it to gain respect? Well, then ask yourself, why do you want to gain respect? Well, I want to gain respect because that's gonna give me more status. But why do you want that status? You will already be becoming a doctor, so isn't like that enough status for you? Why do you want more, okay? And even if you do want more, then ask yourself an even more difficult question. What is that status going to give to you? Maybe boost your ego? Well, then the question is this. Why do you want to boost your ego through this one single avenue? Why does it have to be through being the smartest or through like overstudying and you know, getting the best grades? Why can't it be like that you study and you are an average student who's becoming a doctor and you're also let's say a sportsman on the side you are really good at football or at basketball something at cricket something like that why does it have to be through one avenue why can't you like diversify your personality and your portfolio to gain more of that status and respect that you want so badly if you really want to stand out then why does it have to be through academics and why can't it be a combination of academics and something else you know learning other skills maybe making content on YouTube or any other social media platforms. Why not something else? And why does it have to be this one single avenue? And most time guys, like times you will realize that the reason that we want this respect is because we probably do not have any other aspects of our personalities which can be diversified in such a way that will bring us status and respect. However, once you start learning more skills and start, you know, utilizing your time into learning other skills and, you know, practicing and really getting good at other skills in life other than studying, then you will realize that, that status and respect can actually be brought through other avenues as well and not just by studying and studying and romanticizing with your books for long hours every single day. And when it comes to societal expectations, there is one thing that we need to understand and the moment we understand this is when everything changes. So remember that somebody else's expectations from you are their expectations, not yours and hence it is their problem not yours now understanding this actually softens the blow of disappointment because we are oftentimes really scared to disappoint others you know we don't want to be a disappointment we don't want to break others expectations of us however when you realize the fact that their expectations are theirs they're not yours right if you fail or if you don't live according to their expectations 
it's their problem not yours that's a wrap for today's sapiens now i hope you found this video somewhat useful and you know maybe it will encourage you to live your life or you live your student life in much in a much more considerate way you know not spending long hours studying because there is a life outside of campus of school of university remember that um and here's another video where i talk about how hard medical school really is the untold reality kiss that subscribe button i'll see you guys on the other side take care peace